On March 16th, myself and a couple other rail fans set out to Greenspring, West Virginia to chase the South Branch Valley Railroad down to Moorefield. We arrived just before 9 a.m. and seemed to be in luck with a train sitting here. We were surprised to see this FP9 sitting in the yard, dropped off the day before by CSX. It was purchased by the Potomac Eagle Scenic Railroad, which runs excursions out of Romney. Built as Canadian National 6531 in 1957, it spent the 1980s on Via Rail before ending up on the Algoma Central in the 90s. It still wears the AC livery, despite spending its recent years on the Gettysburg and Northern Railroad. While waiting for the crew to arrive, we went up the road to the CSX main line where we found D720 pulling cars down the scale track. They're a long one out of Cumberland today, and we'll work Greenspring before heading east to Hancock and Hagerstown. cut the first three hoppers away and shoved them a mile down the South Branch Valley Railroad to the north end of their yard. We set up for the shove just below the Y at Greenspring Valley Road. The crossing is clear, so onward back they go. Loaded hoppers for the Pilgrim's Feed Mill in Moorefield make up most of the traffic on the South Branch Valley. Today's shift is a quick one. Back the cars against the others, shove clear the switch, make the cut and go. No pickup this morning. It's odd seeing big GE power do local switching, but SD40s haven't been used here in years since the Hancock to Cumberland turn was combined into the road job between Cumberland and Hagerstown. While they secure the cars, we went back to Greenspring to get the power returning to the train. As they navigate through the east leg of the Y, the conductor rides the rear unit to stay in better position to hop down the line switches. The conductor gives hand signals to guide the engineer back against the train. After the hitch is made, the engineer makes a stretch to remove any slack from the coupling. Then the conductor radios three-step and begins to lace up the train line. It'll be a while before D720 is ready to head east, so at 11 o'clock we went back to check on the status of the South Branch Valley. There's no sign of a crew van, and the power is still sitting quiet. We decided to cut our losses and head to Cumberland to see what was running on CSX. We heard dispatcher mention to track workers at Viaduct Junction that a Q316 was coming up from Kaiser on the mountain sub. We tried to beat the train to Pinto for the scenic shot from the overpass, but they were already passing. Our luck just wasn't going well this morning.
We backtracked to Bowling Green where we were able to get a telephoto shot of the train through the chain link fence on the overpass. Lots of power today, mostly dead in tow heading for the shops in Cumberland. Viaduct Junction is where the Mountain, Keystone, and Cumberland Terminal subdivisions meet, which were all once part of the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. Q316 waits at Beale Street for Q369 to depart the yard. I decided to wait by the bridge while Doug grabbed this shot of 369 departing the terminal. Once 369 clears, 316 proceeds across the viaduct at 10 miles an hour for the sharp curve into the junction. In a day and age where railroads rely heavily on rail car pooling companies to supply the fleet of rail cars, company owned rolling stock is dwindling, so I manage to video as much as I can right now. Pooling companies like TTX own a fleet shared by railroads in a participating agreement, allowing cars to flow freely on the nation's rail network with no provisions to be returned to owners or certain locations before reloading. This increases efficiency by reducing empty miles and providing risk management by absorbing costs for repairs and storage, saving railroads millions during economic downturn. For this reason, CSX and other Class 1 railroads have been removing their own cars from pools and scrapping older ones to cut costs. Still, many shippers lease rail cars, which are often owned by banks like CIT Group, reporting mark CITX, or leasing companies like Trinity Rail or Union Tank Car, TILX and UTLX respectively. To spot non-railroad owned cars, just look for the reporting marks that end with the letter X. Our contingency plan for the day was to keep heading west back into Pennsylvania to find D703, a local that runs 45 miles north from Rockwood to Johnstown on the Somerset and Cambria, simply known as the SNC sub. By now, we figured they would soon be making their return south out of Johnstown, so we cut straight up 160 to the Sandpatch Summit and continue west through Myersdale. This put us well ahead of Q369, still winding their way up the mountain. On our way to Rockwood, we heard Q370 calling signals a couple miles west of us at Garrett, so we pulled off at the Penton Brink Road crossing under Highway 219. Q370 is a daily manifest from Chicago to Cumberland, the counterpart to Q369. Today's train is only 59 cars, which explains why the 4051 was offline. As we were passing Garrett, we heard a train giving car counts on the radio. 
Not sure what it could be, we made a pit stop on our way to Rockwood to discover our first unexpected catch of the day, continuous welded rail train DO-58 shoving eastbound. DO-58 had spent their afternoon dumping quarter-mile sections of rail between Rockwood and Garrett. They got a medium approach signal at Garrett to cross from track 1 to 2 in order to get out of the way for Q369. I have no idea why they didn't just run 369 down track 2, but I am guessing it's because an eastbound is already lined off the single track at Pinkerton, 25 miles west of here. Powering the train is a pair of consecutively numbered SD40-3s, both rebuilt from SD40-2s in the latter half of 2012. Q369 gets the signal to proceed at Garrett as the conductor of DO58 walks back to the head end. Today's train is a short one, only 32 cars. A pair of AC4400 CWs leads four units dead in tow, another pair of AC44s and two Tier 4 Jeevos. If I had to guess, they would be dropped at Demler for coal train power out of Newell. Once they were by, DO-58 crosses back to track one and heads west to resume their work. I've seen CSX rail trains before, but never these old train sets with high sides that contain original CNO and CSX markings. That's where the history gets interesting. Notice the build dates on the cars. 
May 1987, just three months before Chesapeake and Ohio merged into CSX Transportation. CSX Corporation was founded in 1980 as a holding company created during the merger of Chessie System and Seaboard Coastline Industries. That is, after all, what the letters CSX stand for. C for Chessie, S for Seaboard, and X for Consolidated. But the railroads under Chessie System and Seaboard retained their operational identity until subsidiary CSX Transportation was formed to merge all the railroads into a single carrier. The Seaboard Railroads were merged into CSXT on July 1, 1986, while the Chessie Railroads, which by this time were all merged into the Chesapeake and Ohio, became part of CSXT on August 31, 1987. This meant that a lot of rolling stock built during the transition era received both markings of CSX and their subsidiary railroads. At Rockwood, there was no evidence of D-703 in the yard, so we followed the SNC north to Somerset. To our surprise, we heard horns in town only after a few minutes of waiting at the north end of the yard. However, as the train comes into view, it's clear that this isn't D-703, but fresh loads of coal from the Cambria loadout near Shanksville. There's a permanent 10 mile an hour restriction for the Center Avenue crossing, and the slack rolls in as they ease past the former SX Tower. SX is larger than most towers because it contained an office and crew quarters for the yard here. Somerset Yard was once a busy place on the railroad, seeing several coal trains daily, and included additional tracks on the left for car storage and repair. Three tracks remain, though they once extended all the way up to Main Street, putting SX Tower at the center of the yard. Currently, only about two or three coal trains pass here a week, including this N790 bound for export via the Chesapeake Coal Terminal on Curtis Bay below Baltimore. It's possible the D-703 crew hopped on this train at Cambria after tying down the local in Johnstown, but we don't know for sure. We caught up with them three miles below town at Bando Road in Murdoch. We weren't sure if they would take the train all the way down to the Y or continue east onto the Keystone sub toward Cumberland, so we waited for them again at Garrett Road at the north end of the Rockwood yard limits. The crossing activates as they approach, but they would end up tying down. By the time we arrived back in Rockwood, the rail train had already tied down in the mill siding west of town. Q276 works up the grade with a two-mile train of over 100 loaded auto racks. Most auto and stack trains now run in a one-by-one -one configuration, meaning there's one locomotive up front with another remote DPU in the middle of the train. Gone are the days of manned helper service over Sandpatch grade.
About four minutes later, the DPU finally passes. The train crosses Cox's Creek, which flows down from Somerset Lake alongside the SNC, joining the Castleman River at Rockwood. The Castleman River flows west following the Keystone sub from Myersdale to Confluence, where it drains into the Yakagani River. The rear of the train passes the former Rockwood station and under the abandoned B&O Quay Mahoning Viaduct, which was used in its later years by the Western Maryland Railway to access the SNC and Boswell subs up to Cole Junction in order to reach mines near the town of Gray. The station looks good restored into Baltimore and Ohio colors, but hasn't seen passenger service since 1971. We decided it best to follow 276 up the mountain, especially since X216 was falling right behind. But plans once again unexpectedly changed when we heard N754 calling dispatcher for permission to come off the Salisbury branch. Trains on the four mile long Salisbury branch are rare. Shaw Mine loads about 190 car train per month. This is the first train I've seen on this branch in over 10 years, since I caught one at the loadout on my first trip out here in April 2009. It turns out a crew brought a set of engines out of Cumberland this afternoon while we were on the S&C. X216 rumbles by on the main line behind us, but isn't worth our attention as N754 enters the through truss bridge over the Castleman River. Their train is loaded with export coal destined for the Dominion Terminal in Newport News, Virginia. With the drop in coal demand shuttering many mines, it's good to still see trains from both Cambria and Shaw, which are the two easternmost loadouts on the entire CSX system. Further up the branch, the four units are necessary to pull the 12,000 ton train up the hill to Salisbury Junction. Some of you may be familiar with a video here by Jack MP294.5, where two AC4400s slip trying to bring a loaded train off the branch, finally making it after a helper crew hand laid sand on the rails. Since the train will head east to Cumberland, they must go down to Garrett and run the first two units around the train. The remaining two will be left on the rear and set up as DPUs. Other coal trains over Sandpatch also use two rear DPUs, further eliminating the need for manned helpers over the mountain.
the engines throttle up as they climb toward the junction. Here's the main line behind me to give a little perspective of the elevation change. The lack of a runaround siding means a shoving platform is used for the conductor to ride on when backing the empties down the branch. It comes back up with the loads to be set off by the junction. The old bay window caboose has certainly seen better days. Built in 1975, it has faithfully served the Salisbury branch for over two decades, giving a taste of the bygone days of railroading. The conductor remains behind to tie down the caboose and lock up the derail and mainline switch. A crew van will then take the conductor back to the head end to begin the runaround process between Garrett and Yoder. I'd say catching a rail train and a coal train on both branch lines off the Keystone sub is more than enough consolation for missing the South Branch Valley Railroad, especially since these coal trains can disappear at any time without much notice. With it getting late in the day, we made our way back to Cumberland and caught Amtrak 29, running on time with a shortened consist. Tucked in the yard is this SD40 still in Y and 1 paint, renumbered to 7496, its original number when built for the Western Maryland. This locomotive sat in Roanoke for several years before being relocated to Cumberland, pending delivery to its new owner, the George's Creek Railway, based in Luke, Maryland. Having lost their last active customer after the closing of the Luke paper mill in April 2019, the 7496 may never run in revenue freight service as the Georges Creek Railway sits idle with an uncertain future. I hope you enjoyed this day of unexpected CSX rail fanning as much as I did, and will leave a comment below about your favorite part of the video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share with your railfan friends, and as always, thanks for watching.